In a day not seen since December 11, 1972, the U.S. has just landed on the moon. More importantly, this time, the achievements weren't made by government agencies, but by private companies. Yeah, with a successful landing of Odysseus on Thursday evening, Intuitive Machines cemented its place in history as the first commercially built lander to safely touch down on the moon in what's known as a soft landing. On the other hand, SpaceX also plays an extremely important role. What its rocket just did with NASA's moon landing is even more important than you think. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. After a nail-biting descent and a tense silence from the lunar surface, the United States is back on the moon. Odysseus, a robotic lander built by Houston-based company Intuitive Machines, touched down near the lunar south pole on February 22. Unlike most lunar landers developed to date, the Nova C lander developed by Intuitive Machines has a main engine that uses cryogenic propellants liquid oxygen and liquid methane. The company chose these propellants because they are significantly less toxic than hypergolic fuels, and they allow Novasi to have a more powerful engine that can get to the moon in days rather than a month or longer. However, cryogenic fuels are more challenging to work with because they must be kept chilled, and this limits the length of time they can be stored for usage. Because of this, the Novasi lander will be fueled just a couple of hours before liftoff. It's not trivial to load the liquid oxygen and liquid methane into the vehicle, said Bill Gerstenmeier, vice president of build and flight reliability for SpaceX. To be part of the lunar program and to be part of an activity taking these payloads to the surface of the moon, which will actually help in the Artemis program in the future, is a tremendous honor for us at SpaceX, Gerstenmeier said. We wanted to give it our best, so we worked as hard as we can with intuitive machines to buy down all the risk we can, and we'll see how much our hard work pays off as we go. This is a first for using methane on Falcon 9. So the Falcon team was able to lean on the Starship team's expertise in this area to prepare for this mission. This is a first for using methane on Falcon 9. So the Falcon team was able to lean on the Starship team's expertise in this area to prepare for this mission. SpaceX shared on X. The company had to modify the second stage of the Falcon 9 rocket to add propellants onto the Nova Sea lander at the launch pad shortly before liftoff. About three hours before liftoff, Teams began loading the roughly 1,200 kilogram of propellant onto the lander. Once fueled, the lander weighs about 2,030 kilogram. The ratio of LOX to liquid methane is 2.3 to 1, according to Intuitive Machines. SpaceX put a LOX and a methane tank just dedicated to filling the lander itself, and then they fill from other DWARS for their RP-1, kerosene, and LOX for their vehicle, Altimus said. Unlike fueling the Falcon 9 rocket, Artemis said the Nova C lander has the ability to hold the fueling process and just let the tanks lock up with their subcold temperatures. They might get to boil off before we actually lift off, but we can hold in our planned hold is about 45 minutes for the LOX and the methane before we lift off, Altimus said. He described subcooled as the point at which the LOX reaches about 300 degrees Fahrenheit and the methane reaches about 280 degrees. What will happen is that's densified and it serves to provide more energetic propulsion on the way out to the moon, Altimus said. Better mixture, better energy out of the propellants if they're subcooled. Trent Martin, the vice president of space systems for intuitive machines, added that fueling wraps up about an hour before launch, giving them about 20 minutes to ensure that they're satisfied with the fill level and the temperatures of the cryogenics before the start of propellant load on the Falcon 9. And then just about 10 minutes or so before launch, we seal up the system and lock it off and it's ready for launch, Martin said. It's a choreography that has been rehearsed now a couple of times. And now we can say that Falcon 9 has made history with its on-target shot. The landing is a historic one, marking the first commercial spacecraft to soft land on the moon and the first U.S.-made vehicle to touch down on the lunar surface since the Apollo program ended more than five decades ago. This mission is of key interest to Intuitive Machines' primary customer, NASA, which is seeking to scout the moon using robotic explorers developed by private contractors before sending astronauts there later this decade through its Artemis program. Today, for the first time in more than a half century, the U.S. has returned to the moon, said NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. Today is a day that shows the power and promise of NASA's commercial partnerships.
congratulations to everyone involved in this great and daring quest. Previously, the governments of the United States, Russia, China, India, and Japan have been the only nations to achieve a soft landing on the moon. Prior to this attempt by Odysseus, Israeli nonprofit Space Seal, Japanese company Space, and Pittsburgh based Astrobotic all aimed their commercial landers at the moon and all failed to reach their goals safely. This is the second commercial lunar mission funded by NASA. Astrobotic's Peregrine lander launched into space on a Vulcan rocket last month. Shortly after separating from the Vulcan rocket, however, Peregrine sustained a fatal blow when one of its propulsion tanks ruptured. At NASA's request, Astrobotic sent its spacecraft plunging back into Earth's atmosphere so it could be disposed of safely. To be fair, the landing was not without thrills and unexpected events. The landing was delayed about an hour after the originally announced time as additional software was uploaded to the lander that allowed one of the NASA payloads to be used in the landing procedure. It was a last-minute decision when some of the navigation sensors on the lander failed to operate as expected. Once the lander was on the surface of the moon, it took several minutes to try and establish a connection. Eventually, they turned to a communications receiver in the United Kingdom, Goonhilly Earth Station, which was able to provide confirmation of a signal, even though it was weak at first. In his remarks following the launch, Intuitive Machines CEO Steve Altimus said that the propulsion system worked remarkably well and helped the lander touch down safely and vertically as intended. Once the final burn called the powered descent initiation began, the VR900 engine, which powered Odysseus, continuously burned all the way down. Prior to launch, Altima said they had high confidence in their 3D printed engine. We build the engine combustion chamber, the engine injector, and the engine igniter all out of an inconnel, a high nickel steel that we print in house out of powder. And we laser center that powder and turn it into a real part Altimus said, which means I can build engines every five days, I have a new engine. And then, within five days of that, it's all post-process and I can put it on the test stand and fire it. So, we were able to iterate time after time after time, building some 40 engines to get this one engine just right for this particular mission. So, that's the advantage of our liquid oxygen, liquid methane engine. This reminds us of Elon Musk's Starship, which is also being fueled by methane to reach Moon and Mars, right? We hope to see Starship land on the Moon soon. That is also definitely what NASA is currently looking forward to. This is related to its Artemis program. China also aims to put astronauts on the Moon by 2030 and is working with Russia and several other nations to develop a lunar outpost later in that decade as well. India, meanwhile, has said it wants to put boots down on Earth's natural satellite in 2040 or thereabouts. Some politicians have characterized this planned activity as a new moon race, a competition between the U.S. and China for the right to establish precedents and norms of behavior in the high frontier. Exploration advocates, however, tend to see the rosier side stressing the coming exploitation of lunar resources that could help humanity extend its footprint out into the solar system for the first time. Either way, the moon is coming into sharper focus for nations and businesses around the world. It's going to get busier and busier up there. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.